What is up? It's nature. Yeah. 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 Back in the building. And you know what? Today, oh, I know what you're looking at. You're looking at my hand. You're like, Nature Jab, what's going on there? You got the plastic virus. No, actually not. What's ha going on here was um, just, a, I think it was last night. I was just giving the Backstreet Boys the good old back of the hand black magic. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Yeah, rock that. What did he say? <clears throat> Anyways, about two years ago, actually, it's been past two years. I uploaded my first video here on YouTube and it was basically a real nice edited polished video about, you know, microwave pyrolysis, how I built it, blah, 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 that type of stuff, right? But a little bit after that, I actually uploaded my first ever footage of the reactor, like running it and stuff. Now that it's been two years, right? Pretty much this two year anniversary of it. And I've come so far from this Mark II reactor. I figured let's react to it. And I can basically break down my own video and I can deconstruct it as much as I want because I'm critiquing myself. So let's go ahead and watch this. If your employees are traveling, you have to try Nevada. Nevada is a travel and expense tool that works for you. Can you shut the f up? Here we have the reactor. I wanted to show you the process of using this. I got a bag of plastics over here. Most of these plastics in this bag, they're- <laughs> So I already see a, a whole bunch of issues just in the beginning here. First off, as you can see, I'm using that rope gasket, right? That rope fiberglass gasket, which is completely microwave transparent and it's very high temperature resistant. The issue is it really doesn't seal for shy. I thought that I was keeping the gases in. That thing purely is just for sealing in heat in like barbecue furnaces, maybe some smoke, but you ain't gonna be sealing in nothing under a crazy amount of pressure, especially at that little section there where the two ends come together. You ain't sealing anything with that. ODPE, low density polyethylene. So it's as simple as load in the plastics. And of course, another issue, obviously, to anybody who has been in my channel, we know I'm not shredding the plastic here. I didn't have a plastic shredder. You know, you can only do so much, but that is an issue because everything gets so much better when you shred the plastic. Another issue is that there's no agitation in this reactor. What was this guy thinking? Plastic is just gonna sit there and it's gonna end up just being like a lasagna layer where just the top melts and the bottom isn't melting. This is absolute nonsense. All types, really, stuff. Was kind of oh yeah i remember i filmed this right after christmas and i pretty much took all the wrapping paper and all that type of stuff and i i pyrolysized it all because you know i'm trying i'm trying to be on that zero waste all recycling type movement here mixed usually i like to do just one type of plastic at a time so that way i can you know look at the results and account for it and be like oh okay so ldp produces this much gas this much fuel whatever but you know Obviously, right now, it's not what we're doing. Now, you don't want to fill this thing up all the way to the top. I don't know what this guy is talking about. Talking about, oh, we put this much in. Matt, you obviously got to weigh it. If you want to have actual results based on this much or this mix that, this dude sucks. And also, for those of you wondering what that little, um, what I'm putting the plastic into in this video, that is actually um, pretty much a casing made of aluminum fire bricks because alumina is microwave transparent. So I used to have that and they're also insulative. So I used to use that as a way to basically keep the heat in when the microwaves would hit it. And then I also coated the inside on a microwave susceptor or a material that readily absorbs microwaves. So the walls, the inside walls would get really hot. The plastic would get hot and the heat would stay in. Because you don't want it touching the actual the lid to the top but you you know you can compress the stuff down if you if these were shredded it'll be a lot easier um after that you gotta put the catalyst in there <laughs> me running this thing over that little surge protector oh wow how far we've come right because we went to running this off of a little wussy surge protector like that to literally a horse cock of a cable 220 volts five magnetrons on it once 
It's just crazy the thing. So this catalyst I'm using over here, it's just carbon from previous reactions. So there's still some stuff that might be a little bit unburnt because I, I didn't complete the reactions because it started raining. But now that's it. You just put that catalyst in there. Just fill it up. Yeah, so one of the best catalysts are microwave susceptors, which is a material that which readily absorbs microwaves because plastic innately does not absorb microwaves, right? One of the best ones is actually the carbon from pyrolysis. So the plastic, when it breaks down in pyrolysis, it becomes carbon, and then that carbon absorbs a whole bunch of microwaves, which then heats up that carbon, which will heat up the plastic, which is in contact with that carbon, which will make that plastic more and carbon, and that carbon less becomes a carbon, and that carbon less becomes a carbon, and that carbon it's like a self-feeding cycle, but when you're starting it, you gotta put some type of thing in there to get the plastic to heat up on its own. So you can actually use the pyrolysis carbon from previous pyrolysis runs to then do that. So, yeah. A nice thick layer. And what the catalyst will do is it will... The catalyst will help the gas and oil formation. The catalyst will absorb a lot of microwave. Yeah, I definitely should have been sprinkling it in like throughout, not just putting it all on top, because that was actually going to happen here. Since I'm putting all of this catalyst on the top, just the top is really going to absorb microwaves. They won't be able to penetrate down deep in there, because in this design of the reactor, the magnetron is on the top which essentially means that all the microbes are not coming from any sides or anything. They don't really have much room to bounce around. They're coming straight down, hellfire raining down. Fire. And whatever is at the first surface is going to be what it's heated up first. It's really quickly and get very hot. So now we just put this, uh, the lid on get the, the nuts and the bolts to go in there so quite a few of them it's about i guess eight or something like that some multiple of four um i guess that makes it it's either eight or twelve but i'm pretty sure it's just eight so now we got to do that so I'll... i remember when i built this thing right when those little um notches i had for the nuts and bolts to go in they were <laughs> it was made so shy that legit i would have to line them up perfectly the way that i cut them out every time because it wasn't measured each one so like if i if i didn't put it on right a few of them wouldn't line up and stuff so i i had scored a line on the lid and on the um the body itself to let me know like the perfect way to line up the the hole so i got all the, the screws and nuts on the nuts and the bolts and it is really important to tighten them down really well because the gasket needs to be compressed to be really make a good seal and any leaks will be very harmful to the reactor, to you, and to the environment just because there's a reason why, you know, even in crude oil, right? Like crude oil on itself it is carcinogenic. But then how is gasoline not carcinogenic? Because they're able to clean it up before it gets out there, right? So I like to see that as like what we're doing here. We're producing almost like crude oil level stuff, which on its own may be carcinogenic, but once it's cleaned up, you can take those carcinogenic properties and create useful things out of them. And then Yeah, I don't really know what this guy's talking about there. Obviously, gasoline and all these things, if you drink them, you're going to get cancer. If you breathe them in all day, you're going to get cancer. They're most certainly carcinogenic. I think what he's trying to say is that crude oil is really, really dirty, full of things like sulfur and stuff. But then we like desulfurize it when we get like gasoline, deodorize it with gasoline. Basically, you want to treat these things, right? You put the gasoline in your engine, and by the time it comes out the exhaust, just going through the catalytic converter, the gasoline's already been distilled and deodorized, desulfurized. So that exhaust gas at the very end is literally just a few things and then H2O and then, you know, whatever, right? So, but when you have leaks from this reactor, that's pretty much the equivalent of, of just raw, like a crude oil spill in the ocean, just raw, dirty gas just leaving, going into the air, going into your lungs. Not good. Generator here, the high voltage generator. So you see the magnetron itself is over there. Just plug in these leads over right there. One, two, it's AC, so it doesn't matter which configuration. Put the ground clamp, the ground ring around the screw. Um, that was funny. I put down there, I mean like, obviously I, it's, it's right to do that. I said, 
I don't advise anybody to do this if you don't have experience with microwave radiation, electronics, and chemistry. You know, it's funny. I have had none of that. <laughs> I'm not a chemist. <laughs> I didn't study microwave radiation when I made this. I didn't study electronics. I literally had so much of a headache putting the circuitry together. So I still don't advise it or recommend it. It's very dangerous. I mean, because even if you don't shock yourself, electrocute yourself, then you could literally, you know, expose yourself to things that are that are truly carcinogenic and develop, you know, lung and throat issues down the line. And th these are just taught, they're, they're connected to the fan. So that's all they stand for. Um, I usually have a cover one between them so they don't short, but. Now, yeah, just take this and you plug it in to the, the generator itself. It's kind of beat up right now, but you know. All right, so you got everything plugged up now. And now the last step I like to do before I really like turn this thing on is I like to run some argon into it. Now this is a mix of argon and carbon dioxide because I use it for my welder. But really any type of thing like argon or nitrogen or carbon dioxide can be used because what you want to do is you want to flush all the oxygen out, right? So I have this port here. And also it was a good way to test for leaks because you can, you know, spray something around here, see if bubbles form, or you also can hear leaks act as a carrier gas, meaning it will help push the, the pyrolysis gas out because I have the pyrolysis gas running to a bubbler and stuff and sometimes it doesn't have enough pressure to run on its own. So Let me tell you why it doesn't have enough pressure to run the bubbler on its own. It's because the whole bloody thing is leaking, you doofus. Let's turn this thing on now. Oh my lord, that thing sounds terrifying. I remember, I mean, every time I made reactors, the sound of that transformer turning on. Man, like, I would always be scared to turn on the switch. Like, I would always use a stick to turn the on switch on, because I would always be scared if there's a short inside the electronics. Man, dude, that thing sounds absolutely terrifying. The low hum and buzz, the, the vibrations you could feel through the ground. You know, because those transformers, man, you touch them when they're on. You know, even a little bit, it literally could be the end of your life just like that in, in that one second. All right, so it's on. And the thing about microwaves is they work very, very quickly. As you can see, literally just seconds after we turn it on, gas is already being produced, which basically means the plastic is already being broken down that quickly. Now, obviously, this is just going out into the atmosphere right now. We don't want that. So I have designed a filtration system. So now there are some gases coming out the top. You can hardly see them because they're so clean. But when I take a flame to it, look at that. Nice. It's a torch. Just to test the flow of the gases. As you can see, this is the clearest we ever got them. They're almost completely clear. Watch how flammable they are. Look at that. Imagine that flame with just a little bit more oxygen in it. That's a propane flame there, pretty much. So we can collect the oils, and then we have this too. And imagine if this flame right here is what runs the refinery to refine the oils. Well, that was actually something I literally did. I literally made a distiller and ran it off of the compressed gas that I got from the system. Because that's just, you know, it makes energy sense. And it's great because then you do get the oil off of the gas using that product and now you can put that oil right into an engine or a generator and then that generator can run the machine when the reaction is complete i unplug the cables turn everything off i let it sit for like 30 something minutes minimum 45 usually just so that way any residual fumes get out most of the heat gets out you know dissipated and you know it's pretty much safe and i just you take the lid off i want to design a little arm for the lid so that way you know <laughs> <laughs> i literally just saw my foot bloody barefoot messing with these electronics like that it's crazy you know it's kind of like those videos you see of like the people in like pakistan or maybe even india when they're welding and like they, they have amazing welding technique and stuff but then they're like barefoot or just got sandals on no ppe that's kind of like what this is like because all right this machine you know it's, it's pretty cool it looks cool and stuff i mean it, it's, it works but then just the bare minimum ppe that's what it looks like on this side now kind of hard to see on camera there is a lot of oil on this lid okay like um there's the waveguide cover have which is a mica sheet 
with uh, some JB Weld Extreme Temperature. You can kind of see the oil dripping down there. You see it? Like, I touch it or whatever. Like, look at all that oil dripping down. Now, here's the inside of the reactor. As we can see, you saw what I put in there before. You look what's all that's left of it. Now, this, this has been after about four hours. You know, actually, there's some plastic up under there. So, it wasn't a complete reaction. Yeah, so that's exactly what I was talking about what was going to happen. The top layer will be carbonized really well, and then under that, the plastic under there, just the microwaves aren't able to get to it, and even if the microwaves could get to it, they're not going to heat up the plastic itself because there is no nucleation point of heat or microwave susceptor on that plastic. It's only above it. So either way, you would have to run this machine for super long, way longer than necessary, or it would be necessary if you want a complete carbonization. You'd have to run this machine for an obscene amount of time, or... You can just put an agitator in there. So this guy clearly doesn't know what he's doing. I give him a 0 out of 10 because it's unsafe, he's barefoot, his machine sucks, it's ugly, it's leaking. It's just not, it's just, uh, and, and the video isn't even edited well. It's a very poor video, there's no music or anything. Like, I almost fell asleep watching. I, I'm sure what's going to happen is either one of two things for this guy, right? Either one... Well, like what everybody says, the FBI may get this guy, but I think way before that, this guy is just going to blow himself up or electrocute himself walking around barefoot like that. Like, I just don't think that he's going to make it very long. First video there. I guess there's, I do have quite a few videos that we, that, you know, could be reacted to over time because I made a lot of mistakes. So anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought. Make sure you subscribe.